welcome back to another video on the channel. This video is going to be me predicting and giving my predictions for the men's Qatar Open. 32 players in what is a fantastic lineup, headlined by the return of Roger Federer. We've also got the likes of Dominic Team in the draw, Andre Rublev, Dan Evans, Denis Shapovalov, David Goffin. So many fantastic players, and I'm sure it'll be a great week for men's tennis. But we have to start with Roger Federer. Um, hasn't played since last year's Australian Open when he lost in the quarterfinals to Novak Djokovic. I think it feels like a lot longer since we saw Federer. It is only 13, 14 months. I think that's due to coronavirus that it's felt like two or three years since we saw Federer on a tennis court. I think it was interesting what Federer said that at 39, not many players would return from the injuries that he's had. We know Rogers had, I think, double knee surgery and it was a very serious knee injury. At 39 year old, I think most players would just call it a day at that point. But Roger is a winner, he's a champion, a legend of the sport, and you must still think that he's playing well enough and capable of winning Grand Slam titles and ATP titles, which is a credit to himself that he's willing to dedicate himself to the sport and train for a year and get that recovery perfect to prepare himself for events like this and future Grand Slam events in particular. Also the Olympics, I expect to see Roger there. But Roger Federer has done this before. We know he returned all those years ago from, I think it was an injury again, and came back to win the Australian Open. He reached the last Wimbledon final. Um, probably should have beat Djokovic in the final with those two championship points. So I think it's important to think of how well Roger was actually playing before his injuries. So I don't think the age, age is a real factor. Um, do I doubt whether Roger Federer can win a Grand Slam again? Yes, I did say that in the recent video. Um, I just think the level at the top at the moment is very, very high. Lots of the next-gen players are really starting to find the form and ex improve the experience and maturity. The likes of Zverev and Tsitsipas and Dominic Team and Medvedev are really starting to reach quarterfinals and semi-finals and finals consistently now and challenge Nadal and Djokovic. Whether, Nid whether Federer can come back from a year layoff and play consistently well enough to challenge those players and win Grand Slam again, I do doubt, um, especially with Djokovic playing like he is at the moment. But Federer must still believe, and if Federer believes, then you know, you've know you certainly got to take him seriously in every tournament that he steps up at. This is a very good event, I think, for Federer to come back at. You know, He's done very well on the hard courts over the years, and it's just a good tournament to return with the amount of good players that's in it. They're all going to provide him with good tests. He's not going to have any easy matches, which I think is good for Federer himself. We know that Federer will be in shape. Um, he's got a great serve. He times the ball so well. He reads the play. He plays his best in the big points. So I'm excited to watch Federer again. Um, you know, as I said, he's a legend of the sport, and it's never nice to see players like Nadal and Djokovic and Murray, Murray injured. That's why we watch the sport to watch these greats at the best. So to see Federer back in the mix and hopefully at the French and Wimbledon and U.S. Open. Will be fantastic to see, and hopefully we eventually get Federer, Murray, Djokovic, and Nadal competing in the Grand Slam again together, which would be uh, fantastic for tennis. And as a tennis fan, this is exactly what we all want to see. I think Federer came out and said that everything that he does between now and Wimbledon will to be prepared to prime himself for that event, which is I think is right. You know, I said in me. Grand Slam title race video that I think if Roger Federer is going to challenge for Grand Slam again and potentially win another Grand Slam title, his only real chance for me is at Wimbledon, where he's at home there, he knows how to play on the grass, he can adapt his game. I think other than Djokovic, you know, Federer is probably the second favourite going to that tournament if he does come back with good levels of performance and can peak at Wimbledon. So it'll just be interesting to see how Federer gets on. I think his first match will be in the second round against the winner of Dan Evans against Jeremy Shardy. But moving on to some other players in the draw, again, very interested to see Dominic Team. I did wonder whether he could back up his 2020. I thought he was the best men's player in the world last year, winning that US Open, reaching the final of Australia. And some of the tennis that team produced last year was just breathtakingly good. Um, blew everybody off the court at times and was undoubtedly the best player in the world, in my opinion, 2020. But I did mention we've seen Nadal and Djokovic and Federer and Murray have been able over the years to set themselves new targets. Once they've reached the top, they've wanted to achieve more. They've wanted to win more titles, become world number one, stay at the top, um, get better and better. And I wondered whether Dominic team could do that. I certainly didn't doubt them, but it was a question because not all players can do that. And 
he hasn't started the year well. He has come out and addressed that and you know said that himself. But I didn't think he looked particularly well at the Australian Open all throughout. Uh, I don't know whether it was tiredness and a bit fatigued from the year before. But in that fourth round match against Dimitrov, everything that that Dominic team done last year to get that success, you know, the energy on court, the big ball strike and the fight, the heart, the comeback ability, he just didn't seem to have um, against Dimitrov. And he faded out that one very quickly, which was slightly worrying. But he's had a little bit of a break since then. You know, he took February off after this drain open. Um, and this is his first tournament around four or five weeks. I expect to see a rejuvenated Dominic team, get that energy back, the big forehands and serves and backhands and kickstart of 2021 and look to get a good end of the hard court season before going to the clear courts where he'll be looking to win his first French Open title. One man that certainly is in form, Andre Rublev, um, won his fourth consecutive ATP title in Rotterdam last week. Again, a fantastic win for Rublev and I haven't, I wouldn't say I've been critical of Rublev, but I have been in Grand Slam matches. I've doubted whether Rublev has the outright power in match winning shot to come up, to beat the likes of Daniel Medvedev and Rafa Nadal and Djokovic at Grand Slams. And I still do have that slight doubt. But his form in ATP events, um, you know, straight shootout matches he's bang up for and he's playing the best tennis of his life. I do think he's continuing to improve. He is still very young. But he's very consistent, he's serving great and his all-round game just looks fantastic at the moment. Was slightly disappointed by his performance against Daniel Medvedev at the Australian Open. I thought he'd give Medvedev more of a test, but again, he just didn't adapt his game well enough. He played in the hands of Medvedev. And I think for those five set matches, it's key that Rublev starts to develop a better all-round game. I do think he needs to switch up his game with a backhand slice. He needs to become better at the net. Um, develop a match winning shot and I do think he could potentially win Grand Slams in years to come but as far as ATP events go Rubez done a fantastic job you know to win four consecutive ATP titles is proof is in the pudding um, you know he's playing brilliantly well he's producing his best in finals he's very fit he's eager to climb the rankings and give himself better draws in Grand Slams and other than that, we've also got Aslan Karatsev, the wild card to reach the Australian Open semi-final. David Goffin, who's always a joy to watch in a hard court. Borna Korich had a good week in Rotterdam. Denis Shapovalov, Dan Evans, Stan Vavrinka as well. So a fantastic lineup with the Qatar Open. Um, undoubtedly headlined by the return of Roger Federer. I'm sure there'll be many people across the world watching Roger after him being off the court for so long. So I hope Roger comes back. Most importantly, is injury free and somewhere near his best. I don't expect Roger to be his absolute complete best. I don't think he'll win this event. I think he will be slightly rusty, um, but I think the movement will be there in the serve. But this is a very going to be a very difficult tournament to win when all these players have been playing very regularly um, over the past year. If I was to pick a winner, these tournaments are very tough. As I said, I think there is questions surrounding Dominic team. I think you figured find some of the form that you found last year then he'd be an outright favourite to win this one but at the moment I can't look past Andre Rublev you know he's come off the bat of a fantastic win in Rotterdam his fourth consecutive ATP title he seems to be full of confidence going every semi and final that he plays at the moment so I'm going to take tip Rublev um, to continue that fast, fantastic winning streak and take this title in Qatar I will be posting videos throughout this tournament Probably from the quarter-final, semi-final stage, I'll probably do individual match previews and predictions as I will be watching the full tournament throughout. There is a lot more content as well coming throughout the year. The clear court season starts next month, leading into the French Open, which will be fantastic to watch. Then we've got Wimbledon, the Olympics, the US Open, so a fantastic year of tennis coming up and I will be covering it all on the channel. If you have liked this video, please do drop a like, also subscribe, it is much appreciated and I will see you on the next video.